This week, we suffered another enormous loss for the comic book industry. This time, it's not a publisher. It's not a comic shop. You know, we didn't have a character destroyed, but it appears that Comixology, as we know it, is pretty much dying. We have conflicting reports that either they laid off half their staff or they fired everybody basically yesterday. At Amazon, there's a bunch of layoffs going on there. Comixology was affected, and it sounds like greatly affected at that. If there's anyone left at Comixology, it sounds like it's probably a skeleton crew of people there working that do have an end date in sight. This is a huge loss for comic books and an enormous blunder on Marvel and DC Comics. Obviously, this isn't destroyed because of their stupid ideas with characters and basically giving people what they don't want in their stories. This is an enormous blunder on the part of Marvel and DC Comics for not reading what the future of comic books is and seeding, essentially, the digital comic book space to Comixology, which was acquired by Amazon, a company that you can imagine could give zero Fs about comic books, generally speaking. DC and Marvel, at least 10 years ago, should have gotten together and created a competitor to take over the space because, in theory, those companies, or at least the people that work for them, actually do care about comic books. Now, I'm not saying the people that work for Comixology didn't care about comic books, but the people at Amazon certainly don't. Unfortunately, DC Comics and Marvel Comics are too busy destroying their brands to actually see what the future of comic books is. All you have to do is go over and look at Japan, go look at Korea. Japan is the largest comic book market in the entire world, and a majority of their comic book sales are digital. They also have a very good plan when it comes to attacking the U.S. market with the Shonen Jump app. $3 a month. You absolutely cannot beat that. And that is full access to everything the day that it is released. DC Comics and Marvel have their own digital platforms. Marvel Unlimited and DC Infinite Universe or whatever. And they have really, 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 really stupid plans on how to attack the digital market. Marvel Comics has decided the way they're going to make Marvel Unlimited worth years and my time is to fill it with a bunch of comic books they would never actually print on paper because they have terrible artists and terrible stories. But it's exclusive digital content. I guess that's their strategy. DC Comics has taken a better strategy, but also not very good. They're actually allowing their customers to access new comics a little bit early, I believe 30 days after publication, if you get the Ultra Package but they're putting it behind a very expensive paywall. You can actually get a year-long subscription to Disney Plus or Netflix for cheaper than you can get a year-long subscription to Disney Infinite Universe Ultra, whatever you want to call that stupid app. They have terrible digital strategies because I think they just thought Comixology would always be there. That is not the case. Amazon has cut a significant part of its Comixology staff as part of its mass wave of layoffs Wednesday. The company announced in early January that it intended to eliminate 18,000 roles beginning on January 18th. How about we call that what it is, Polygon.com, 18,000 jobs. Workers across the company began receiving notice of layoffs on Wednesday, largely focused on the Amazon store divisions, which includes Comixology. And that is very unfortunate. I don't actually like seeing the comic book industry gets smaller in North America. I think it's great and certainly admirable what the manga industry has done in Japan, where they've expanded their foot reach essentially worldwide using some very easy to copy tactics that Marvel and DC just can't get their head around. But I can tell you right now, as somebody like me living in the Philippines, there's only comic book shops in one city in this entire country. I know that's the same exact case in a lot of places. I just talked to Gray, who lives in Japan. Very similar situation for him there. If he wants to get American comic books, it is absolutely a chore and you have to read digital for the most part. I get contacted by a lot of viewers in South America. They're going through the exact same thing. But I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, as the world is becoming more accessible, things are becoming digital and everyone is being able to enjoy the things they want no matter where they are. Somehow the comic book industry led by Marvel Comics and DC Comics is becoming more regional to North America. My goodness, more people know about these heroes today around the world than ever before, yet less people are actually reading the comic books. Ridiculous. In comicsology, losing comicsology is only making things worse. News of comicsology's layoffs hit social media Wednesday. Comicsology program manager Scott McGovern confirmed via Twitter that he and numerous other staffers were affected. Current and former comicsology workers who asked to remain anonymous because they were not authorized to speak to the press told Polygon that staff received emails informing them of the layoffs. These groups of people were pulled into separate meetings 
depending on whether they are being let go immediately, laid off in a few months, or cut further into the year. Amazon declined to comment beyond its January 4th statement. From Amazon CEO Andy Jassy, the exact number of impacted comiXology workers is unclear, but workers who spoke to Polygon said a significant number of people working on the platform will be affected before the end of the year. A smaller number of people were laid off immediately on Wednesday, with more notified that they stayed on till midsummer or longer. There are a lot of conflicting reports on just how many people and how much of that staff were actually laid off. Initially, it sounded like about half were going to be let go immediately, but there's other indications on social media, other people that work for Comixology that were laid off immediately that made it sound a little bit more dire, like possibly everyone was let go. I don't imagine that is the case. We have publishers dying. Action Labs is pretty much no more. We're not going to see Valiant here in a couple of years. It looks like IDW is just going to blow up any moment now. Comixology were actually kind of expanding a little bit, and they have done their Comixology exclusives to where there was at least another option for these comic book creators to find some work. Obviously, Scott Snyder went over there and created some really cool books and brought in some really good artists. I imagine that cost a lot of money, but at least there was somewhere where if they didn't want to work for DC or Marvel and they didn't want a chance at maybe doing crowdfunding where they could actually go out there and work and kind of do their own thing. I think Joe Corrado, friend of the channel, he's been on this channel a lot. I believe he also worked on the Comixology exclusives. I believe maybe he edited a few of those books, maybe wrote a few of them. I know he's worked with them in the past. So it's just the, the comic book industry is in such bad shape. This is the worst thing that could have happened as if things actually could have gotten worse with Comixology when it comes to comic book readers. When Amazon acquired Comixology in 2014, it was the clear leader in the digital comic space. At the time, the service operated on both Amazon's platform and independently. In 2022, Amazon migrated Comixology into the Kindle infrastructure with a new app. The sudden change was received poorly by longtime Comixology users who complained that the new app made it harder to read, shop, and publish on the platform. Workers who spoke to Polygon reiterated that Comixology staff cared deeply about the quality of the user experience, but felt like their hands were tied in making major decisions like the migration. The service itself has more than 230,000 comics, graphic novels, and manga from top publishers like Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, and Image, alongside a range of independently published comics and Comixology originals, a line of platform-specific and digital-first comics, it's unclear what effect the layoffs may have on Comixology Originals. Obviously, that's one of the things that we just don't know at this point, but they have to be affected, right? If you lay off all your staff or even most of your staff, who's going to go out there and do the oversight? Who's going to do the contract? Who's going to make sure that they're even going in there correctly? This is a major, major, major blunder for the comic book industry once again. I, I can't reiterate just how short-sighted Marvel and DC comics are. And it's not just in their publishing efforts. Yes, they're short-sighted that everything is an event now. Yes, they're short-sighted because they keep rebooting series and it means nothing anymore. Yes, it's short-sighted where they try to throw ratio variants on every single comic book they publish in the hopes that collectors will get into the comic book shops and save their asses right now. But it was so, so short-sighted not to realize that the future of comic books was digital and they needed to take the bull by the horns. They needed to be the market leaders in North America when it came to digital comics. You didn't see Shonen Jump going out to Alibaba and saying, hey, why don't you just do all the digital comics in Asia? No. Shueisha went out and made their own app. Actually, they have multiple apps at this point, and they have a very good price. They're very competitive, and they make it very hard not to say yes to the opportunity to subscribe to their platform and read their content. Marvel and DC go out of their way to give you every reason not to read their comic books. DC Infinite Universe isn't available worldwide. Marvel Unlimited isn't available worldwide. Not being in North America and being a fan of superhero comic books absolutely sucks. And it sucks worse today, even though Comixology has essentially been broken for the better part of a year now. There was still hope that it could be fixed. But after seeing this, that's obviously not gonna happen. I think it's time for us to understand that the corporate takeovers of the comic book industry, not really by design. I think they were just trying to grab IP. Obviously, Warner Brothers has had DC Comics for a very, very long time. But Disney taking over Marvel. We've also got Dark Horse and other publishers working with some of these streaming platforms and whatever. Amazon taking over basically digital comic books will eventually destroy the North American comic book publishing efforts as we know them. 
the comic book industry in North America is going to have to change, or it's just going to be manga, like, you know, kids' graphic novels and stuff being crowdfunded. There's no leadership. There's no vision on what the comic book industry needs to be moving forward. You can look over at Japan. The biggest comic book market in the world, the majority of their sales are digital comics. They almost give their comic books away. And I do mean every single damn one of them on their Shonen Jump app. It's only $3 a month. That is exceptionally, exceptionally competitive. When you think about the amount of content you're getting, when you compare that to the value add for Marvel and DC and even Comixology, it, it's, it's a joke at this point. I don't know how else to say this. I know this isn't directly Marvel and DC's fault. This is more of an Amazon problem because they're doing the layoffs. But Marvel and DC could not see the forest through the trees. They could not see what was ahead of them. They could not see the importance of digital comics. They let Amazon take it over, and now it's falling apart because guess what? Amazon, quite frankly, does not give a shit about comic books. If you're unaware of what Amazon did to Comixology last year that rendered it virtually useless, I do go on a nice tirade here because I was absolutely pissed off because I count on Comixology every single day. If you don't see the video here, there's also a link in the video description.